Hi everyone, it's finally here. Time to redo my bottom 10 He-Man episodes list. Just like with the redo of the top 10, I'll keep the original video because I can still watch it without cringing too badly. And once again, it's a 50-50 split between both seasons of the show. Let's not delay the inevitable. On with the list. Number 10, The Ancient Mirror of Avatar. You'll all probably remember this from the bad episode reviews from the second He-Man review series. In fact, there are not going to be any super surprising entries on the list. Basically, this episode is a massive cheat. He-Man and Malacta, the royal archaeologists, are going out to see to discover the ancient city of Avatar and strike it big when they discover the magical mirror. Unfortunately for the viewers, this episode has almost nothing to do with the mirror. The actual plot concerns the heroes return back when their ship hits a storm and a lazy, irresponsible lighthouse attendant son causes trouble when he lets the water ruin the lighthouse. Hell, the villains don't even do anything in this episode. Like I mentioned in the review, the thing that bothers me most about this episode is that He-Man and company take off on a crappy rickety boat, even though the Eternian Navy clearly would have much better boating technology. What, did they burn up the entire kingdom's budget on the ship from the VHO episode that got sunk? The one redeeming quality of this episode is that it's the second and easily the best appearance of Moss Man, who actually gets to use his power several times in this episode. It's just a shame the episode itself is boring. Number 9, Revenge is Never Sweet. This is the lackluster follow-up to the excellent season 1 episode, The Witch and the Warrior, where the evil wizard Kothos is turned back into a human and he seeks revenge against the evil Lin, who turned him into a sand slug at the end of the previous episode. Now, a big problem with this episode, I think, is that it focuses on Kothos, who, in all honesty, was the least noteworthy aspect of the whole Witch and the Warrior episode. Secondly, I just find the fact that he switches sides from being a villain to a good guy at the very end completely unconvincing. And thirdly, yes, it just bothers me to no end that the characters just start calling him Kathos in this episode instead of Kothos. Might stand a chance against Kothos. Look, isn't that the evil wizard Kathos with Orko? Fat fool Kothos. This is Kathos. Kathos! Now, like a lot of Season 2 episodes, the animation quality is actually pretty high, and I even like the fact that He-Man actually goes out of his way to rescue Evil Lynn in this episode. It's not much, but it does save the episode from being any higher on the list. Number 8, Colossar Awakes. This is the introductory episode of Skeletor's Collector. In the episode, Skeletor is draining the energy of living things in order to bring a giant statue called Colossar to life and smash into Grayskull. Let's cut to the chase. He-Man defeats Colossar with one punch. What the fuck, Skeletor? Worst of all, the episode is just filled with over-convenient story developments and things that make little to no sense. And just like most terrible Season 1 episodes, the animation quality, despite spiking up in the scene where He-Man enters the Collector, is really half-assed and sloppy. Number 7, Song of Solis. I said it once, I'll say it again. Some asshats build a city over a giant monster's lair and need a singer called Solis to lull it back to sleep. No, seriously, what kind of a moron decides to build a city over a giant monster's lair? You know this episode is heading into trouble when the initial premise is this fucking stupid. The actual plot is a double whammy where Skeletor kidnaps Solis in order to use her singing powers to lower the jaw bridge while He-Man has to deal with the monster that threatens the city and does so by just killing the monster. Yes, He-Man actually kills the monster for once. What the fucking shit, Filmation? Okay, crappy plot setup, crappy animation, orc racism, an island of ice and a lake of fire, magic singing, and He-Man monster murder. Oh yeah, and Lizard Man's second appearance. Just like with Moss Man, it's better than his debut appearance. Doesn't make me want to watch this episode. Number 6, Mistaken Identity. The origin episode of Moduloc, the shittiest He-Man villain ever. Next episode. Oh, isn't this a beautiful day, Orko? Yeah! Okay, fine, I guess I'll churn out the bullet points of why this episode is so shitty. Cliche plot setup of a guy pretending to be He-Man to impress his girlfriend. Check. Evil genius who is smart enough to build a machine in his prison cell that turns invisible, but not smart enough to make himself invisible so he can get out. Check. Villain getting rejected by Skeletor. Ouch! And also check. Obstinately moronic villain believes the guy bullshitting his girlfriend is actually He-Man. Check. Ridiculously dumb villain tries to escape on rails. Check. 
Congrats, Moduloc. You officially suck. Unfortunately, the writing is at least consistent enough in this crappy episode that it spares it from being in the bottom five. Moving on! Number five, the Time Corridor. Skeldro wants to go back in time, plant the Wheel of Infinity, yada yada yada, destroy Grayskull in the present. The premise makes no sense! No, seriously, the episode can't possibly even carry itself with a logic hole that freaking big in it. Even though I thought the idea of going back in time to see Grayskull's construction was a kind of a cool idea, literally everything about this episode is wrong. The good guys, the ape men, Fang Man, who's just a cheap replacement Beast Man, and He Man destroying the wheel by making it spin faster which makes no sense either because that's what Skeletor was planning to do all along. Arrgh! The only reason I can't put this episode higher, and believe me, this is a very slim silver lining, is that I can sort of see what the episode writer was attempting to do by trying to expand the series lore, but everything goes south after the opening. Oh boy, we're only at number 5. See, this shit is why Mistaken Identity wasn't in the bottom 5. Modulog doesn't even suck enough to make it into the bottom 5. Number 4, a beastly sideshow. More sloppiness, Beastman pretending to be a carnival owner, Pretty Kitty is probably just panther and drag. Am I already repeating everything from the previous list? No, but seriously, this should have actually been a good episode. Any episode that actually deals with the dynamic of Cringer and Adam should be a heartwarming character building affair. I put Cringer in my top 10 He-Man characters list for that reason specifically. Yet, this episode does nothing of worth. He-Man just has an unexplained vengeful streak which doesn't advance the plot and Skeletor gets defeated by Pepper. Do I really need to go on? Number 3, Search for a Sun. It really came down to a coin toss which of the two Count Marzo episodes should be up here, and before some fucking smartass comments like, yeah, well, why didn't you have the Eternia Flower in the bottom five as well? Because it's my fucking list, the order is arbitrary, and it doesn't fucking matter. You happy? Of course you're not, you son of a bitch. Hey, perfect landing! Anyway, this one took the cake for me because it doesn't just feature the second suckiest He-Man villain ever, Count Marzo, but it's also the origin episode of the second worst He-Man ally after Buzz Off, Mechanek. I'll link you to the review to see exactly why this episode is just incredibly dumb and almost nothing about it makes sense. The writing is possibly the worst part, and I'll just leave you with a few slices from some of my favorite nonsensical moments in the episode. No! I won't do it! I won't use my flute to help you steal! You fool! They escaped through this rock, but I don't see any controls. Then we'll have to make our own. I have a funny feeling all day in my antennae. Uh oh, pterodactyls. Ooh, what can I do? My flute! He's fallen into a pit of lumas. You're good at jumping out of the way, Blinky, but let's see if you can take me on. Put your arm around my neck. And hold on! Number two, the good shall survive. Um, bees. It's Buzzov and bees. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Also, I kind of made a video about this one already. You can click the link, go watch it. Number one, and still deservedly so, the royal cousin. Alright, instead of relaying you the exact same song and dance as I did back in 2012, I'll just now dissect why Jeremy is the worst child character in the history of He-Man and cartoons in general. The big beef I have with Jeremy's character is that he's a troublemaking kid with no respect or regard for other people's property or safety. When he's tricked into giving the rock softener to Evil Lynn, he does feel bad and goes out to try and help. Now, this is where this character turn stops making any sense for me. Jeremy is displayed as being a complete, selfish, insufferable butt munch through two thirds of the episode when suddenly he just grows a conscience. I mean, seriously, these are the first words that come out of his mouth. Oh, the last time I saw you, you were just a baby. Big deal. If they had at least bothered to show Jeremy act at all like a normal person rather than an egomaniacal sociopath, I could be at least slightly inclined to believe Jeremy's turn at the end. It's the same problem as I have with Kothos' change in Revenge is Never Sweet. 
but that would still make this a sloppy episode where barely anything happens and man at arms build a fucking rock softener. No, seriously, a fucking rock softener. That's the list. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Hunter the Hunter Mackinen. Till next time, I have the power, so can you.